Okay, so yeah, hi, I'm David Wilcox, uh, the program leader for Fedora at Lyricis. And um, originally this presentation was going to be kind of more generally about some of the work we've been doing over the last year or so uh, on uh, migration tooling uh, from uh, Fedora 3 to the latest version of Fedora. But uh, as it happens, while I was um, on vacation last week, we got some good news about uh, a grant that we had uh, applied for and, and have received. So uh, I very quickly retooled this presentation to be more about that uh, that grant project and uh, what we plan to uh, to do, the, the the timelines and outcomes, et cetera, because uh, I thought that might be interesting for uh, folks here. Uh, and we'll be communicating a lot more about this uh, in the days and weeks to come. But we're really just kind of uh, ramping up on it this week. Uh, so the grant is one I've, I provided a link here if anyone wants to take a look at sort of the specific details of it. Uh, but this was a, a grant that we submitted to the Institute of uh, Museum and Library Services. Um, based on a, a, a planning grant that we had already completed uh, around um, designing a, a, a migration path for uh, Fedora, where we investigated some of the reasons why uh, many institutions are still using uh, version three of Fedora and some even earlier, uh, what some of the barriers to, uh, to migration are. And so, so this is uh, largely an, uh, an implementation grant to implement some of the recommendations from that uh, initial planning grant. Uh, so it's a, for uh, about $250,000, uh, funded over 18 months, uh, and the focus here is primarily on moving from Fedora 3 to uh, version 6, which is the latest version, but uh, more generally just kind of um, the uh, the latest uh, uh, supported version of uh, uh, software. And so the, the challenge we're trying to address here, uh, and I've spoken about this before, and, and uh, I think early on in this um, uh, conference, uh, I gave a talk on uh, sort of summarizing Fedora 6 and what we're doing with that. So I, I won't um, recapitulate all that here, but um, very briefly, I think it's fairly well known that uh, most Fedora installations are, are running version three or earlier and that those are not officially supported anymore. There's of course unofficial support from the community, but uh, official support really hasn't been around for some time. Um, and so content in those kinds of legacy systems is just uh, naturally at risk because the software is not officially supported anymore. It's not getting uh, regular security updates or, or patches or anything like that. Uh, and so the content is, is, uh, is at risk. Um, but on the other side, uh, migrations generally tend to take a lot of time and effort. And specifically, uh, we found that um, the, my, the path for migrating from Fedora 3 to uh, version 4 or 5 or any of the sort of more recent versions uh, had been particularly difficult for a number of reasons. And so um, a lot of work we want to do with this grant is to uh, facilitate those migrations and make them much easier. Uh, and so overall, just the kind of high level goal um, of this grant is, is to try to bring the community forward to a modern and supported version of Fedora. Um, and, and that's generally, I think, how we'll measure the success of this, uh, of this grant is, is looking at uh, how many of the institutions using Fedora 3 were able to assist uh, into getting into a, a more modern and supported uh, version of the software. So uh, this is sort of the, the process that we intend to follow um, one of the major chunks of work here, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on each of these points uh, in the following slides, is, is to work with a couple of pilot partners. Um, and the goal there is, is sort of uh, taking them through the process of doing a migration and an upgrade, uh, but all along the way, developing, testing, and refining um, not just migration tools, but also documentation and best practices. Um, and the goal here is not just to get a couple of institutions um, upgraded and onto the latest version of the software, but really to try to uh, develop a toolkit. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that, um, but, but this is something we hope to share with the community to provide a, a pathway to uh, move on to the latest version. Um, and the culmination of the grant uh, ideally will be a, a dedicated migration training event, um, although we originally wrote this uh, before COVID, um, and I'm not sure if even um, by the time we want to host an event, if, if we'll, we'll be actually doing in-person events. So um, that may end up being an online event. I'm not sure yet, um, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So the, the first phase of the grant is going to start in September, and we're doing a lot of the ramp up work for that now. Um, but it's uh, intended to run from September through May. Uh, and the goal here is to work with a couple of pilot partners, and I'll, I'll talk about them in a moment too, but uh, one of these institutions um, it has a, a custom Fedora front end, uh, but the other is an Island Dora installation, so that's relevant for um, uh, the folks here on the line. Uh, 
Um, and the idea here is to kind of work through the, the, the entire process of uh, planning and executing a migration, uh, including all the kind of decision making around uh, metadata mapping and, and um, uh, configuring the, the migration tool, um, uh, updating the, the, the front end uh, environment, uh, basically all of the components. Uh, and again, really what we're trying to do here is, is as we walk through this, this whole process to uh, start developing this, this toolkit and, and document all the decisions that are getting made and try to develop some community best practices. And there's been lots of great work, of course, in the community already, so we're not going to start from zero. We'll, we'll certainly be um, looking into and drawing from all the great work that uh, many of you have already done to uh, uh, assist people in, in, in kind of making these decisions and, and figuring out uh, how to move forward. Um, but the, the the sort of end result of this initial phase of the process of the uh, of the grant is to uh, develop this toolkit um, and and be able to uh, distribute that to uh, uh, to the wider community. Um, and the partners we'll be working with uh, one is the University of Virginia, who's been a, a longtime uh, member and supporter of, of Fedora, and they have a, um, a relatively small collection that we're going to be working with um, as an initial pilot. Um, with a custom front end uh, uh, to uh, be able to, to pilot and support those Fedora institutions that are not using um, a major uh, front end uh, uh, project like Islandora. Uh, there, there are lots of Fedora users out there that have custom front ends. And, and so that initial pilot is gonna be focused on that use case. Uh, but then the next pilot, uh, we're gonna be working with Whitman College uh, on uh, their uh, Islandora repository uh, and again, working through that whole that whole process of uh, moving to uh, Islandora 8 uh, using the latest version of, uh, of Fedora. So there'll be lots more detail on this as we start to ramp up and uh, uh, put together the uh, the full project plan. And, and, and so you can expect more communication about this um, in, uh, uh, in the near future. But uh, uh, really excited to get started with this and really looking forward to uh, working with these partners. Uh, so phase two of the grant is intended to pay, take place in 2021 between June and September. Um, and the idea here is to distribute this toolkit that we developed to the community, uh, solicit feedback and iterate as needed. So this is going to take a number of forms. We'll certainly put together some webinars. We'll host some open calls. We'll uh, develop some uh, uh, workshop materials, some training materials. Uh, but, but here we're really going to be looking for um, feedback from the community, you know, is this toolkit useful? Are there gaps? What's missing? Uh, and we'll also still be soliciting feedback from the pilot partners as well to try to continue to kind of iterate and improve on these tools uh, over time. Of course, there's no one size fits all approach. We're not trying to uh, develop a, a sort of one click, you know, migration tool, but we're just trying to lower the overall level of effort that's required for migrations and assist in some of the decision making that has to take place, try to provide some information on what kind of resources are required, what you should expect in terms of um, uh, you know, timelines and, and uh, technical know-how and, and et cetera. So um, that, that's sort of the idea here is, is not to sort of solve the problem completely, but just to lower the barriers as much as possible. Um, and finally, the, the sort of last phase of the grant, which is uh, intended to take place uh, October 2021 through February 2022, uh, is to organize a two and a half day workshop um, it, that is uh, focused on uh, migration. So we would uh, much, this is structured somewhat similar to an Islandora camp. We would we'd bring in some instructors from the community. Um, we try to uh, address a number of use cases, uh, custom front end migrations, but also Islandora migrations and ideally Sambera migrations as well. Um, and, uh, you know, invite participants to bring sample data with them and, and try to just kind of walk through that whole process in person, you know, going through decision making, um, setting up a server, configuring the tool, running it, verifying results, all of those different things. And this is still fairly far out. We have kind of a loose idea of what we want to do for this event, but that'll solidify over the next year as we kind of figure out what, what makes the most sense. Uh, and again, this whole thing was designed before a global pandemic, so it's very difficult to say today whether even, you know, uh, over a year from now, a uh, an in-person training event makes sense. Um, but if it doesn't, then we'll, you know, move this to an online event and um, try to make that even, even more widely available. Um, the intent is that this event is going to be free to attend, uh, and we do have travel funding built into the grant, so we'll, we'll try to make sure that institutions that want to send someone but um, would not 
be able to uh, due to you know funding challenges around uh, paying for travel that um, we'll be able to uh, use some of the funding from the grant to uh, to pay for that travel. Um, and there are a number of other activities um, that are going to be going on around this time as well. Um, we'll be producing these training materials and and hosting webinars and and doing a lot of um, uh, online training uh, as well. So um, the the intent here is not to have a single kind of in person event and then never distribute those materials. We will uh, undoubtedly do, be doing a number of uh, online trainings and uh, and uh, workshops and and webinars and uh, and those sorts of things as well. Uh, and of course, all through this, uh, we'll be doing a lot of evaluation to make sure that. Um, we're uh, producing things that are useful to the community. So the pilots are really critical here. And even after the initial migrations, we'll be kind of working with the pilots all throughout this period to kind of continue soliciting feedback and improving the materials that we're producing. Um, and as well, anyone who's attending the migration workshop or any of the online events uh, will be soliciting feedback as much as possible throughout this, this whole process. Um, and then of course, after the grant ends, the intention is to continue to support the, this toolkit and uh, these uh, training materials and, and webinars and events and everything else. And, and that's primarily done just through our um, ongoing membership funding that we, uh, that we receive on an annual basis uh, just from members that uh, uh, support Fedora. And I always like to say uh, thank you to all those institutions that support us. This is very similar to the Islandora Foundation. Um, and um, I, I know there are some institutions that are members of both um, the Islandora Foundation, as well as uh, Fedora. Um, but this is really critical to our work. It's, it's the only way that we can fund staff positions uh, like my own and also uh, the tech leads uh, to be able to continue uh, producing the software and, and sustaining it over time, as well as all of these associated materials to help the community uh, migrate to the, uh, to the latest version. So I'll leave a few links here and, and, and you have the link to the slides. So you, you can go through and, and click on these if, if you like. Um, it kind of in parallel to this grant effort, which will be kicking off next month, we're of course still working on uh, the version six of Fedora, which is more or less in an alpha state right now. We haven't actually cut an alpha release, but uh, that's more or less the, the state of the code um, intending to get to uh, beta this year and then a release early next year um, if, uh, if all goes well. And there's a lot of really great work just going on um, in the community right now. Uh, so we, we have some um, uh, migration utilities. Uh, we have a number of performance and scale tests that folks can run if you wanna just validate that um, the, this latest version meets uh, whatever uh, you know standards for performance and scale that you might have. Uh, we are running code sprints all throughout the year. The first week of every month, uh, including this week, uh, is, a, is a code sprint to try to get us to uh, a, a release of, uh, of version six of Fedora. Um, and of course, we, we have an active Slack channel for folks that want to jump in and, um, uh, and there's a link here if, uh, if you're not already a member and, and um, would like to, to support us in that way as well. Um, but there are lots of communication channels and if you're on our mailing lists, uh, you'll receive updates about the grant work. Uh, and certainly if, it, if it's of interest to you and you want to know a bit more, um, you can feel free to uh, contact me directly. My, my email address is right there. Um, as I said, this is something that we're really just getting started with and I literally got back from vacation yesterday and, and sort of started, you know, kind of ramping up on this and putting this presentation together and, and, and trying to, to uh, get going on this grant. So it's, it's very early days, but um, you can expect a lot more communication over the next uh, days and weeks and months um, as we really kind of uh, uh, get moving on things. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I think there's a few minutes for questions if, if folks want to know a little bit more about um, any of our, our plans here uh, or how to get involved. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, stop and uh, uh, yeah, I guess, Melissa, if there's um, questions in the chat, uh, feel free to read those out and I'll uh, respond as best I can. All right, first question up. Uh, with the migration toolkit work that is targeting specifically uh, FC repo three to FC repo six, or is the intent to also provide tooling for implementation of specific systems like Islandora or Severa? So, yeah, I think there's two, in the context of this grant, there are two different migration tools that we'll be using. Um, we have, and it's on this previous slide, there's a, a link if I can go back. So this migration utils tool that I, I've linked to here, this is very specifically a, Fedora 3 to Fedora 6 
migration tool. So this is a lot less relevant to the island or a community. This is much more relevant to uh, folks that have uh, custom front end uh, Fedora implementations and they just want to take the data directly out of Fedora 3 and put it directly into Fedora 6. Um, there is also, of course, the uh, migration tool that the island or community has been using, the, the migrate 7x claw tool uh, that moves data between Island Aura 7 and Island Aura 8 using Drupal. We do intend to use that tool for the Island Aura pilot. So there'll be these two different kind of mechanisms. And then again, uh, the Sambera community will have a probably a different tool that they will use because they, they have a different front end framework um, as well. And so the, the toolkit that we develop is intended to address both of those use cases, but there'll obviously be different paths depending on whether you have a, uh, a custom Fedora implementation or whether you have an, uh, an island or a uh, implementation. Um, but we, we do intend to address uh, at least both of those in the context of the grant. There is also a note that the, the slide deck you linked to is uh, from your presentation at the first island or online. It's not this one. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just grab the link to this one here. I think I had both up and probably just copied the wrong one. Drop this into the chat. Okay. Next question. You may have missed it, but what about migrating from Islandora 4 slash 5 to 6? Oh, so that's not really in the scope of this particular grant work. Um, I'm actually not sure if the current uh, Migrate 7x Claw tool really addresses that particular use case. Um, but I, I would say just in the, in the scope of the grant, that's, that's, um, probably, uh, that's probably out of scope. It certainly wasn't something that we considered when we were putting the, the funding together. Um, but if there are folks in the community that are interested in that use case and want to contribute to this effort, um, the, the toolkit that we're producing is going to be, you know, open and, and you know, uh, available for, for contributions. And I'm sure some of that work would apply to earlier versions of Islandora. And if there's folks with knowledge of that that would like to sort of contribute and, and help us sort of differentiate those, you know, where things might be similar, where things might be different, I think that the, those kinds of contributions would be very welcome. Uh, but that wasn't, in the context of the grant, we're very specifically thinking of uh, Fedora 3 sites and uh, Island or a seven sites. Um, so that, that's, that's just the, uh, the scope that we, we have in mind here. Okay, not seeing any more questions. I'll say thank you very much, David. Very excited to see that, that grant come forward and look forward to seeing the results over the next couple of years. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, and again, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with the Islandora community on this, um, not just the particular pilot partner that we've selected, but um, this is intended to benefit the whole community. And we're, we're hoping to get um, contributions from uh, as many folks as possible. So uh, yeah, stay tuned.